though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. It's rolling around the bend. Good morning, all you fine, fine people. How are you? It's currently 8. 19 a.m. running a little bit late. It's because I decided that I would honor the first because I always say I don't do that, but then I end up doing it. So I thought, oh, look, Megatonic Audio was first in the chat today. And uh, Megatonic Audio is doing something super, super cool. So I did want to honor him. He is a soldier of Rome. And I, I shall honor him tonight, today. This morning, whatever it is, how the bloody hell are you? Is anyone watching? <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to uh, escape the prime time a little bit, at least on the draw stream. Keep it a bit more chill. By the time I can figure it out. Every time is prime time nowadays. It's tough out there, but uh, that's okay. We're gonna hang out. I'm gonna do some flatten, a little bit of chatting. We have. I like how Streamyard now boosts your ego it says there's 10 watching on youtube and 15 <laughs> on twitter i'll take that as fact there's three over on rumble faux peasy's over on rumble yo faux peasy what up we also have uh this fella right here mr uh da -da 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 -da. raiden radio only nine ninety nine thousand nine hundred twenty two signups to go until i am the artist on what is it? Eudaimonia? So yeah, if you haven't signed up yet, I've put the link in the chat. I've pinned it for you. So if I don't know, we get a raid from Tim Pool or uh, I think a Salty, um, make sure you do sign up to Eudaimonia 3, which I think I'm going to have to do a Rising Tide video on. A deep dive on the Eudaimonias because uh, they are great. And I haven't read them for a little while, so Always good to go back, uh, David G. What's this? Another early stream? Well, Weeb Thursday, there was no Weebery, so. And I thought, look, let's use this time together. I'll get, I'll be a little bit productive. We'll get some work done. How about that? Hail Mobigs in the chat. Great to see. Good morning. Good day. Good afternoon. Awesome one. Captain Bipto. I don't know if JDA is streaming at the moment. We have JVP Music in the house. How are you going, my friend? Great to see you here. Here in the steadfast Jav Stala. Yavol. Genuine is in the house. How are you going, Dave? Uh, Ethan, this is Rob saying, speaking. Ethan's new show will start the same time tomorrow. Yes. Uh, undoubtedly. Corey Barton is here. Grey Wolf is here. Who else? 
Mo has a good suggestion. Everyone, please hit like and subscribe if you haven't. I think everyone here has. Maybe George Bonnie hasn't. Hey, it's got that Honda logo. Americans don't pronounce that strangely as well, do they? Like Honda or something. Let's say all the car names weird. Corey Barton's here. Good morning. Nick Axe. Eric Weathers. Well, looky, look who it is. The simple even know we exist? Us? No. I don't think so. He's a bit busy right now with uh, the fact that your president has dementia and you don't have a country anymore. So, you know, lots of politics going on out there. We've got Maromi in the house. Has Mrs. B agreed to do this drawing for you? No, she's dropping the kids off at school. It's just flatting. So I can do that. I can handle the flatting. She does the drawing. I do the flatting. Mr. Uh, Cranberry Lang is in the house. Flat-tastic. You said it. Clutch boogies here. All right. Check this out, by the way. Bit of that Groken shine from yesterday. Everyone was backing. Oh, I've got to bring up Groken, by the way. It's going to be a Groconathon, uh, at least for the next month. Got a big backer yesterday. 70, what's that? $77 away from 70,000. 77 from 70. I'm going to put that in the chat. 77 from 70. Seven is a lucky number. I'm let. I'm told. I've been led to believe. Uh, so thank you to the backer from yesterday. Let's go check out Groken. Gro, Groken. Three. So we've got on offer. What's happening? Getting very close to a hundred thousand dollar dues there, Kenneth. Sick, very close to 650 backers. I still haven't backed yet. I will work that out. Uh, $63,000. I'm invested in the mega success of Kenneth Roquefort. By hook or by crook, by will, we, we, the Roquefort will see it done. And I've seen the Roquefort out there sharing out this campaign like madmen. Everyone's backing it. It's a wondrous thing to see. Uh, so make sure you do as well. Glorious, glorious art. You know, I was, I was looking at all that glorious Kenneth Roquefort art, and then I was looking at my own, and I was like, oh. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You, As an artist, don't do that. Don't compare yourself to your betters, to your superiors, because then you won't ever do anything. You just got to power on. Some more people joining us here tonight, today. King Ban, Hendon Schnelli. Hello, darling. Uh, what up, Brian? Hope you are well, my friend. Uncle Martin with the mountain bike. Good evening. What a funny avatar you have. <laughs> Gordon Goodbrother, Massive Panda, Henry Bemis. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that was hard. That. Anyone would have felt like, oh, man following broken like that but like i said this i'm only doing really two nights at this point at the at the moment where i can really promote anyone so and i've got a bunch of people kind of waiting so i gotta do it you look at Rockefort and not just go back to bed you that's that's the inclination that's what it feels like you should do but uh no you gotta power on otherwise nothing's gonna get done all right i am flatting this morning it's a big job, but somebody has to do it. Henry Beamer says, Groken 3 is tracking better than Groken 2, just like Groken 2 did better than Groken 1. It is crazy, isn't it? It's a it's a crazy, crazy idea that if you put out a fantastic book, people will come and, come and support it. And you, 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 can, you get it out regularly. I think that's another, that's really the big thing. It, three books in three years. I can't do that. Although I think, I don't know how long they are. I think they're like 60 pages, something like that. But um, dude, yeah, he's crushing it. He's crushing it out, Kenneth. Mr. Roquefort. All right. 
What do I start on? I mean, I started on the crane. If I start on the crane, I'll probably only get the crane done. That's the problem. But I do like to start on things that are more difficult. You know, tackle the heavy jobs first. That's usually my my modus operandi. I'm just checking things out, making sure, okay, anti-alias is off. Because that would be a nightmare. And I think we're good to go. Do I? No, I'm not going to do that. This is Flatten and Chatten. There are 26 people watching. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we've got seven over on the Rumble. Uh, Faux PT managed to get his hands on the two Roker ash cans. Excellent. It's my fault, he says, because of the stream yesterday. No, they really, I, you know, it's not much in them, but it really does add some kind of integral context to the story that I was missing before then. So, uh, and it really kind of unlocked the whole thing for me because there's so many characters. It's such a big, expansive, weird world. There's nothing in it that um there's nothing in it that you can run it kind of pin yourself down with that you're familiar with obviously you know there's human humans in there and it, you know but there's no real connection to your world or anything so it is you're just kind of what do they say in media res you just dropped in the middle of this crazy situation and left to fend for yourself which i do like i do the same thing in the lucent but i guess <laughs> I guess that's what a lot of people say, how the loosen is confusing. So it's like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a taste of my own medicine. Oh, that's what it's like to read the loosen. Fine. Okay. Actually, I wrote something last night. You know how people will do a recap at the start of the second book? Oh, you know, new books to kind of catch you up on where we're up to. I needed to do something like that, but I didn't want to just do a straight recap because how do you do a recap when you're trying to be mysterious and not, you know, give it all away? I think I did pretty well. I'll read it to you later. You guys can let me know what you think. It's completely unedited. I just did it last night, so I haven't even shown it to Joe yet. Tackle the heavy thing, heavy jobs first. That's why Bancroft always starts the day handling Rod. Another big job. <laughs> but uh you know the work needs to get done massive panda says they tell us to study the algorithms algorithms post constantly on all socials make youtube videos interact with public and have on-time books we're only human yeah and and the thing with kenneth is you can't really it's not like you and I could really replicate what he can do because he's, as Aldous loves to say, he is quite literally a generational talent. There, There is only one. There is only one Kenneth Roquefort. And we can't make art the way that he does. God knows we've tried. I know Dean James is trying and he's, he's improving like crazy. But I mean... Kenneth is a name, Kenneth is a pro, and then he just smashes out it's kind of the best art of his life. Art does help sell books. It also helps if the story that you're weaving is intriguing and shows promise and, and you can get it out at a regular clip because it really doesn't matter how good your stuff is. People will eventually... Um, you know, start to wane and you got to try and win them back somehow, which is, you know, another hurdle that God knows I'm facing. Captain Bipto, Rob is still recovering from Rini's stream. Yes, Rob was on Rini's with Rini and Ali. And Captain Bipto rightly pointed out that he thought Rob only had 10 minutes in him. I mean, Rob stuck it out. God bless him. We know he doesn't have very high tolerance for the female voice, but uh, he stuck in there like a champ. You know, tried to make a few jokes. They didn't. They didn't land, but he put an effort in, and that's. I think that's what really matters. I can't even remember. Like this is all just all this crane stuff is literally just lines that I kind of put in there. So 
Um, I don't really remember what's what, but you see the struggles we go through to flat these things? Even Kenneth says flatting is far and away one of his most time-consuming things. And I have no idea how Kenneth colors his books. No idea. I cannot figure it out. I don't know his method. It's a mystery to me. It's magic. The struggle, says Eric Weathers. Wrong, says Nick. There are at least five Roker forts. Actual other cannons, like doppelgangers. That's how. That's his secret. That's how he does it. That's why he's always so secretive when he comes on camera. I'm presuming. My problem with flatting is I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So all these little bits hanging out, they really annoy me, even though they probably won't print. You know, they're, they're too, this will all be way too small to see and print. But still, I know this all goes, that's all one piece. I've got to get this piece. I've got to get this page done. And this isn't the only thing on the page. There are inset panels and stuff. I've got to get this all drawn and colored by the end of this month. So I've got eight days. It should be fine. It's going to be a lot of work, but it'll be fine. I'll get it done. Burn the midnight oil. Because uh, then i got to jump back onto finishing the rest of the colors. That includes the Paris scene um, and finishing off the uh, the final dalliance uh corey is there noticing some pixels out of whack i'll try and start out to be quite pedantic but i know eventually i might just kind of go cross-eyed and and give up mo says for more information on bancroft's personal perfectionism please see the lucent crackhead cut well it it kind of it it evolves mo you know, and like I said, at some point you just got to accept that this is your art. This is the best you could do at the time. And as Eric Canetti says, if you fall short on anything, just say, "Look, I'll get it next time." You know, and that's a good way to handle when people critique. They're like, "Oh, this is good, but I think you kind of were lacking in here and here." You say. All right, cool. Well, I'll try to get it on the next one. Do a bit better. My God, this is a nightmare. It was a nightmare to draw it, actually. I could probably, a lot of this is kind of closed. Let me try that for a little I'll do a bit of a camel method. I'll just fix this up. Captain Bipto told me to get glasses. I'm a natural. I, I would rather squint than get glasses. All right, where's the paint bucket? Let's see if I can paint bucket these bad boys. Hang on. No, I can't. Can I? All right, let me, I've got to find where the crane is. Is that this? Okay. All right. But now I've got to make a, a thing. I've got to make an action to explain. I think it's expand and fill. I might actually have that. Expand two pixels. Let's see what this does. With the background color. Foreground. All right. This might actually take more time. All right. All right. Okay. This could actually work. I just need to click all these things one at a time. Who knew? Okay, I can't do there. Can't do there. Look at this. All right. Now we're cooking with gas. Can't do there. Can't do there. Can't do there. 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 All right, let's just keep going. Yes, yes. 
can't AI flat it. I cannot. Yes, I think it probably could. And that was Rob, by the way. I can't wait. Uh, because there are programs that will do this, but yeah, they're not intelligent, you know? So you end up having to go through and fix it all anyway. So you may as well just do it right from the beginning. This is, this is pretty good. Is actually working okay. But yeah, the moment AI can figure out flatting, I am getting that app you know, the day it comes out. Oops. Okay, nope. This is actually working pretty well. Why didn't this one work? Oh, it does. You, you, oh, you, you. All right. That's pretty good. And now, with the magic of actions... Why is it lighter? I like that color better, actually. Uh, so let do it. Oh, no, I was in the wrong layer. That's why that was wrong. That's why it's like that. Okay, there we go. Uh, Replicator says, okay, I'm off to watch some paint dry. You are more than welcome to, Rob. I mean... You know, you can join in on the conversation. Do you? Is there anything you would like to talk about? Hmm. I just felt like you know we we had the high octane drawing of the crane. Now we get the high octane flatting of the crane. I do things on draw strings that no one else dares to do. Everyone else is like, oh, I'm going to draw a pit. I'm going to ink him. You can draw a spawn. It's going to be great, very heroic. Drawing cranes and backgrounds is an integral part of building a proper, properly, fully realized story. Jelly Green says, silence sounds about nice, right? <laughs> and look, you get to find mistakes. See, I just found a mistake. This shouldn't be here. So we're going to get rid of it. As David L. rightly says, Michael Bancroft is a visionary, an iconoclast. Thank you, David L. Couldn't have said it better myself. I seem to have screwed up here. Clearly, I've gotten a bit ahead of myself. It's all right. Just undo that. Nolan says, Rob only watches paint dry so he can eat the chips after. Tasty, tasty paint chips. <laughs> I remember watching uh, Corey do this back in the day. That would have been years ago now, like three years ago. And everyone was yelling at him, just hire a flat. And he was like, no, nah, no. Nah. I do kind of understand it. One day I'll hire a flatter. One day. I have inquired. I just haven't gotten around to it.
Daniel in the house. Yo. Women say, fill it up, says Joseph Pantalon. Do they? About what, Joseph? Mo says, Rob only wanted to go ghost hunting so he could visit some old buildings that still use lead paint. Better flavor of chip, he claims. <laughs> I think Rob left us. He got bored. There were no boobs. In this background setting. What have I done now? Up early, says Snuggy Jr. It's called day drink in Bancroft. I had, I do have a drink, but it's a tea. My morning tea. Uh, Corey says, I just use pencil tool for flats instead of selections these days, so I'm not getting as many straight pixels. I use both. So for straight things, I will use the selection tool. Even though this crane is slightly bent. It is most of the lines are still straight, but yeah, from if, if it's a person, oh no, it depends. Sometimes it just, I just go by feel. Sometimes it just feels right to use a brush instead of the la lasso, not lasso, <laughs> lasso tool. I don't know where I got led astray on that word, but it's ingrained in my head now. A bitter tea? Um, yeah, I would say it's quite bitter. It's black tea. It's just straight black tea, nothing else. Just a uh, builder's tea, Lipton. Lipton black. The only tea I drink. I used to drink all the others, you know. Earl Grey, Darjeeling, whatever. Australian afternoon tea, which is the thing. No, I just I just drink the one tea. I know what I like, and I likes what I knows. Speaking of those stray pixels. What does Mo say? Uh, he's speaking as me. I use both. For straight things, I will use slightly bent. It's personal. I just go by feel. Sometimes it just feels right. Try zoning out while Baker is talking. It's more entertaining. <laughs> he also says, Stabber McGee would let no other T than Earl Gay cross his lips. Hmm. Did you know Earl Grey, you can drink with a lemon twist, but never milk. Drinking Earl Grey with milk is a travesty to nature. Don't do it. I think I could go back. Let's have a go here. Oh. See, the problem is I don't really connect my lines up very well very often. <clears throat> and it would take just as long a time to go in and fix that up than to just flat it anyway. So I'm kind of stuck. How do you know you're having tea, dinner, or tea, tea? Context, but I don't really call dinner tea anymore. I think that's sort of gone out of fashion. Especially, I don't know, I, I it might be... You know, Mel isn't 
a native English speaker, so she would have never used the word tea for dinner. But uh, that's all I said when I was growing up and, and when I was a teenager. What's for tea? Good morning, Dean. Corey says, coffee is better than tea. I don't drink coffee. Never have, never will. I just don't like the taste. It insists upon itself. See, now what do you do here when I've stuffed up the line? I guess I just have to do this. No one's going to notice. You guys aren't going to tell anyone. Uh, Dean says, my dad says it's tea time and my mum always yells at him for it. Maybe it's a regional thing. Is your, it, Where's your dad from, Dean? It could be a, it, a lot of these things could be Queensland things because I grew up in Queensland and I just didn't, never realized that, you know, they do things differently down here. Amanda in the house and the house asks, is that line straight, straight ish? Dean says, no, he's from Brody, but he's very old though. Yeah. I think it's an age thing. I really do. It's a boomer thing. I don't think it's continued on. So many words. Now the kids these days don't watch TV shows like we used to, they watch YouTube channels. And so they pick up what people are saying on YouTube, which is mostly American, not all American, but mostly, mostly American. My kids say candy, which I tell you rubs me the wrong way. I don't like hearing that. I correct them. It's not candy. It's lollies. Although the internet doesn't really like that either, but you guys can go suck it. How we do it here in Australia. What am I doing? <laughs> Mo says, stop saying lollies or fizz will show up. <laughs> Again, different kind. You know, it's all about context with Australian English. Now I've got to remember what I was doing here. All right, let's, uh, where's that? Not lollipops. Uh, Americans do seem pretty confused about the whole lolly thing because, you know, it's not a lollipop. And we don't, and I'm a little confused about the whole candy thing because to us, chocolate is not lollies. Um, that's chocolate. That's a whole different thing. And you got different kinds of chocolate, like chocolate bars and stuff like that. So. Whereas in America, it all just seems to be one giant thing, which is a bit more like the British do with sweets. We don't do that. We get specific. <laughs> Chocolate is not lollies to us either, says my... <laughs> uh, 
Very interesting path to make a circle there. Well, I was trying to, I was thinking about something else at the time. I don't quite, I don't know what this line is here. I guess it's just going to be a, a line like this. It's making errant lines. I guess this is going to be like that, I suppose. Maybe. I was watching Blade Runner while I was doing this. I was looking. They had. There was a lot of. There's also a lot of girders and beams and you know city things in that in that movie. So I felt inspired. It was my muse. Oops. What did I do? Jolly Green is in the chat, expressing his love for the chat. Gay. You know, I was thinking the other day, as I do from time to time, how Hollywood died when it stopped being able to make comedies. And I think of the last, because I was watching, what was I watching? We watched The Hangover, which is, oh my God. And you watch, you're like, there's just no way. There's no way that they would make it now. It's done. But it doesn't feel like it's that old. There was The Hangover. There was, um, we watched the other, the, other, the other guys we watched. What else? Um, I haven't seen it recently, but Tropic Thunder and stuff. Yeah, Camel says Tropic Thunder was the last real comedy. And then the Me Too movement happened and the activists came in and took over. And then, you know, the trans and the, the Gibbity Q and all that. And it's like Hollywood just, I guess, lost its sense of humor. And without that sense of humor, there's no soul, you know, and even the even even movies that are supposed to be serious and not really funny. Even they, they just kind of have a, a lack of soul. And then you've got these blockbusters that are trying to be funny, but it's all that Joss Whedon kind of humor, which isn't real humor. It's just, you know, snarkiness. I was like, I think this is, I think that's what it is. I think the, it for Hollywood to come back, it needs to bring back comedy. I just don't see that happening. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. But God, I love a good a good comedy, one that's kind of, you know, risque. Hangover was crazy. I didn't remember how crazy it was. The, remember the ending where they look at all the photos? Oh, that was so good. I remember the first time I saw that, I was in tears. Uh, comedy requires truth, says Crumby Lang, they can't tolerate truth. Exactly. That's what the activists, they can't laugh at themselves. It's because, yeah, Massive Pan, it's too offensive. Because good comedy is offensive. Good comedy punches up and down. And all it punches in any direction that's funny. Not punching up, sorry. You know what I mean. Um, and now we've got protective classes and you know well we you know what we have it's just not it's not an environment where comedy can exist in a well i mean it does but it's it's on youtube or i don't know it's in there actually i do see comedians still some comedians pushing the boundaries, but a lot of the others, a lot of the big ones cucked out completely. Ronan Farrow ruined the world, says Hamill. I don't know what that is or means. Is that a person, Ronan Farrow? I don't know who that is. Jake says, comedy is too offensive. That's why I watch old TV shows and movies. 
yeah and even though i think even the ones that aren't comedies per se they still benefited from that michael are you going to see ghostbusters afterlife no but i will listen to camel talk about it <laughs> mo says good comedy punches itself in the nuts rob arnold's helmet <laughs> Ronan Farris started the Me Too movement. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they, see, that's the thing. It didn't need to be a movement, really. Maybe it just had to be a kind of a reckoning. Um, obviously, what's his face? Weinstein, Weinstein. Weinstein needed to be held to account and whoever else. Um, but, you know, it, it went so out of control. Uh, and some of the stories are just outrageous when you hear them, the people that got cancelled. And you know, even high-profile people like Louis C.K., who did nothing wrong, or um, you know, a bunch of others, just outrageous. It didn't need to become a movement. It's just like, okay, well, out the, out the, the degenerates and the predators, and then get on with it you know it all became a whole thing and you remember at, it was, i don't know if it was around that same time but there was oscars so white which is which killed the oscars because it was a, a complete farce from the beginning the oscars the oscars so white thing its own stats showed that um black people in the oscars were way overrepresented above their population percentage you know so and it, it, you know, it was nothing about anyone else except black people. No, no other minorities. It was a complete joke from the start. <laughs> Me too. Ruin House of Cards says Camel, which is one of the best shows in history. Yeah, the first, I don't can't remember exactly how many, like three seasons. I can't remember. Were just so good. It was crazy how good it was. Mel was obsessed with it, and then I became too as well. But then I can't remember when I stopped watching. Louis was polite when he wanked in front of the ladies. Weinstein demanded participation. Louis asked. He's like, hey, I like jerking off. I'm sorry for anyone who's... <laughs> it's a little early with that. He's like, this is, what I want. this is what I want to do. Are you okay with that? They said yes. That's it. That literally is consent. I mean, it's the, it's the very definition of consent. Anyway. So, yeah, the point is, I don't think we're going to see anything good, whether it's... Um, whether it's uh, comedy or not, come out of Hollywood until comedy returns. I mean, maybe there'll be some good things, but maybe just not great things. There definitely won't be a great period of time until comedy comes back. You know, some things might slip through here and there. <laughs> Ellie says, I had jerking off. I came as soon as I could. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Cranberry Langens rightfully points out that's like 60% of people in Hollywood who are deviants and predators. Yep. Uh, thumbs back. Hello. Hello. How are you going? Oh, damn it. Look, I did all this. I suppose I'll just do it in a different color. See, I got I got talking about how I got ranting about Hollywood and then I got distracted from my important flatting work. It's very important. Um, okay. Slightly different color. K 
carbon dioxide says they need blackmail on you in Hollywood. So you have to do all the twisted stuff. Like crazy. That who's that guy who's outing all that stuff. The, um, the comedian is going on all the shows, spilling all the tea. Uh, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he's saying like, why do you think all these people, all these dudes dress up in dresses? It, it's like, that's them. That's, that's these crazy perverts in charge owning them and the only way you get in essentially is if you wear a dress and you see and then there's so many photos of these dudes on red carpets in female clothing just looking like they want to kill themselves but this is like this is that's it like that's the only way in and you're like oh my god pat williams yeah once you see it it's it's like oh my god because none of the people were like this at all beforehand you know you watch them in interviews or whatever when they're coming up and then they get to hollywood and then all of a sudden they're doing weird degenerate stuff and you yeah you, you can't, it's like the casting couch for the for men it happened to Terry Crews. If it can happen to Terry Crews, it can happen to anyone. I mean, that guy's like a friggin' linebacker. Mr. Monkey points out he doesn't see any rainbow in the Lucent. I'm on my way to get cancelled. As long as I have about a thousand backers, I'll be fine. That's all I need. I don't need to rely on them. There's a kind of sweet spot in crowdfunding where you can actually make decent money, have a decent audience, and not have to you know take it to the next level i think i'm talking billy tucci graham nolan aaron lapresti shane davis uh kenneth rocafort they say graham nolan um maybe john uh, he like, he sold a lot on godlike i don't know and like ethan went beyond it so so now you, when you go beyond it, well, now you need warehouses. You need, because you just, and I know that, I know that some of those guys have warehouses, but they're, they're more like just, you know, s separate small places to, um, you know, put books. Like I've got a shed, you know, but if it got to a point where I needed to hire a, uh, sorry, like, you know, a lease, a, a little space somewhere, that's fine. But you know you get up to these points where you're doing million dollar campaigns um now there's logistics involved and employees and all this sort of stuff so and it gets crazy i wonder what it is i wonder what the number is you know how many backers probably somewhere between one and three thousand If you could get 3,000 backers, you'd be making crazy amounts of money. We got Neff in the house. Camel says, if I don't make over 1 million on the next campaign, I'll leave crowdfunding forever. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Camel. I got your back. I'll... I'll do my best. Uh, the bankrupt bump has been doing well lately. I don't know if it's doing that well, but you know, we'll see. Even poor Ashley, who came in yesterday, hot on the energy of friggin' Groken. You guys came out. I think he picked up two or three backers, which is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Henry Bemis has a suggestion for Camel, which is just wear a carpet. Uh, just wear a, a dress on the red carpet. Campaign will crush. 
Holly Weird indeed. Ah! This is the problem in doing it in a small window. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was a fail. God damn it. Normally I would do this full screen, but you know, streaming. Mo says there aren't many, there aren't any million dollar CG campaigns since Beerus cancelled his bros bulge. Coincidence? I know. He used to be the filter. He used to be like the coffee filter at the bottom of the drip feed. He didn't want that position anymore. It was too much responsibility. He just wanted to eat giant burritos and I don't know what else. Being on YouTube takes its toll. People want you to uh, get involved, get take a side, fight their battles with them. You just got to say, look, I just want to have a giant, I just want to sit here and eat a giant greasy burrito. All right. Is the day of the million dollar campaign dead in CG? Uh, there's only been one, hasn't there? The one that was the one with the toys. And I think, yeah, I, I don't think it would have gotten to a million. I think it was because there was the toys with it. That was a Cyber Cyber Frog Two, I think. Cyber Frog One didn't make a million, did it? I think it made seven hundred thousand. I don't know, maybe it did. You need a massive influx of people, huge. From where, I do not know. Because what do you need? You need probably about... It's totally off the top of my head. 20,000 backers, I think. I think 20,000 backers would get you to a million. That's just a, if I'm wrong on that, you know, I'm wrong. But yeah, I don't think anyone's pulling that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Cranberry Langan says, I think it made a million after the sec. All right, if you count all, yeah, if you count all of them together on the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you remember, that was the, in the first one. That was like 2018 or something, I think. And he says, I don't think the shenanigans of the last year have helped CG one bit. If anything, we're getting smaller in terms of backers. The natural entropy of this sort of thing is for people to drop away and yeah if you're not into the um kind of jerry springer drama scene yeah that's that's obviously going to drive you away but i mean people are going to leave anyway as well um just because that's just what people do you know so unless you're actively going out and finding people where they are constantly yeah it, it 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 shrinks so um you even even holding on to just say i had a thousand backers in the at the end on the first campaign uh, even holding on to them requires finding new people because it's just not going to be the case that every single person who back is going to come out and and you know, take part in the second one. Also as well, people might just, you know, people, I've seen people say this, they tried crowdfunding for a few years uh, and just realized, oh, look, it's not really for me. I just want to go buy books, you know? So you got to contend with that as well. Um, I 
so i have plans i have plans uh once this book is out to do a bit of that outreach like i did uh with the shorts but for um for comics so well, we'll see we'll see how it goes it's not going to be as big as you know movie and tv topics i still yeah <laughs> I'm getting so many, I'm getting lots of subs at the moment. I'm like, what is going on? And then I realized oh, it's because the X-Men 97 cartoon is out and I did a bunch of X-Men shorts. So now they're getting shared again. So I'm getting a whole bunch of subs and I'm getting a whole bunch of people yelling at me. But yeah, that's just what happens. Um, so yeah, you can do it. It's just actually being able to do it and make a comic is a very 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 tall order indeed Dale, I, I think other platforms on youtube is important 100 percent. yeah there's that as well i mean think of it like this people might love your comic and they're coming to back it they love it they think it's great it doesn't mean they want to sit around and listen to you waffle on for an hour and a half while you flat a page that's not the same thing so you know it's there are people who just want to read a comic and then when they're not reading a comic they're hanging with their family or they're watching a tv show or they're watching a movie or they're playing video games or whatever they don't necessarily want to hang out on the streams and be part of a community or anything like that so you got to get them as well you got to find them in the first place wherever they are conventions out on the internet and you know other places so that's the hardest part well, well, now that i'm making a concerted effort to read more of these books i found so many are actually really great and the only thing that they lack is the audience yeah, you know, because people don't know about it and you think as a creator that you, all you're doing all day is kind of yelling about it but you know a, a tiny tiny sliver of people are actually hearing about what you're doing or seeing it henry boomer says not backing certain campaigns at high level allowed me to save the money to back Rokofort big time i always i always go the biggest i can on on the Rocafort ones because I want every cover for my collection. But uh, that's fantastic, Henry. Uh, are you still going to go into the webcomic thing, Bancroft? Uh, yes, and at some point. I have no immediate plans, but yes. I think there's there's readers there so i've got to figure out a way to make it square with what i'm doing in crowdfunding and i haven't figured that out yet um but yes good lord mike likes to talk says brad <laughs> oh you gotta have to brad Um, nearly, nearly finished with the book about a month off, I think a month or two. Um, so when that's done, Brad, you know where you'll find me. Moses webtoon readers enjoy scrolling images. Just do a self insert 40 pages of forehead. <laughs> the world's longest scroll. I, I did look, I didn't even get, I didn't even finish the crane. See how long flatting takes? It looks cool though. These are not the colors, by the way. Um, when you flat, you usually pick a, a bold, bright color so that you can see whenever you draw outside the lines. This, uh, what do you call this? This, uh, aberration this deformation that's ella shooting 
past it and then she's going to be here she's going to be trailing um like sparks and stuff like she's on the cover there might be a little bit of a shock wave sort of sound wave thing here i haven't figured that out yet and that's why she's sort of she's bending kind of like gravitational lensing um so what's happening here is this is uh this is her flat how do i explain it she is this this setting is real but this is sort of like her dream self shooting through it so that part isn't real anyway you'll see it you'll see it actually you know what i want to show you guys let me save this i uh like i said you know at the start of a book i did it on uh i took it from this actually i took the whole look from it um from the first book that i ever got which is this one the first french one uh where they start because this is the this is the sixth chapter of this um and he started with this page it's like a, a recap of everything that had happened before and i didn't want to do a straight recap because it you know it'll give away things that and i want you guys to figure out and stuff like that god that is bright <laughs> um ever since i started doing the top down camera it's been messing with this camera i know i know what's going on uh, so i wrote this yesterday right i haven't sent this to joe this is unedited raw we're raw dogging it here so this would be at the start of the book and it kind of runs through images of waking dream but it's it's more like narration so it's still a little ambiguous but it also might give you some context through which to enter uh, the second book so it says some believe it began at the dawn of civilization that it first came from a desire to heal a cruel and dangerous world to build a new one see like with this guy People are always like wondering, what is he doing there? So I'm kind of dropping little hints and stuff. Uh, a better one. A world of infinite wealth and wondrous power. A little bit of wondrous power there. Uh, but power is a dangerous game. And those who play at it learn soon enough that it doesn't matter why you started. How noble your intentions. Eventually, everyone sees the truth. I'm trying to link every kind of comment to you know what's happening in the book i did it's so bright i think it's because there's sun sunlight is shining directly on these uh blinds here and it's kind of lighting up the whole thing uh where was i uh so it said everyone sees the truth power is a game won by the powerful play it long enough and they will find you like a force of nature crashing down upon your head. Whether you rush to face them or hide in the shadow, it matters little in the end. Destiny knows how to wait. And yeah, so it kind of links up and then it runs. So it goes directly from there and then we're back. So it says destiny knows how to wait and we're back in the Persian Gulf, 2700 BC with Gilgamesh. Um, Bancroft's wedding ring is the key. <laughs> yes. See, I thought that was an interesting way to sort of do a recap, but not really do a recap and, I don't know, uh, be my usual ambiguous self. The one ring. Is that the same body of water Ella was uh bikini ella was floating in yes it is that is the exact same body of water as you can see the uh which is it's the, the waters of death God, i haven't looked at that piece in ages it's gonna fall down uh, where is that it's in here somewhere move my tea out of the way ella is appears twice in this book by the way Hang on, let me go. Let me stop sharing this. 
She's there as well. Making a ginger root sand castle. <laughs> Camel Moon. Lucent 3, riding fence. Lucent 3, walking eggshells. <laughs> Where is it? It's been a while since I've flicked through this. Some of these people have, I don't know, they're kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Some of them, not all of them, not many actually, now that I look at it. Where is she? It's going to be in here. Is there a cat? Is there like a, uh, is there an index? Oh, there is. Characters. Uh, Ella 24 56. 56, 56. Where are the page numbers? Phil. Why have a thing if you don't have page numbers? Ah, there she is. The giant Ella. <laughs> 50 foot Ella. Uh, Damon and Ella in the sand. And there's the decaying ziggurat in the background. Have we got here? Is that Dan Dahl? It is. Ella isn't real. She isn't real to me. Will I back a sketch tier for Groken 4? Are there still sketch tiers? They're still available. Got a couple of minutes left before I have to go to work. There's the sketch book. You can get the sketch book. But I don't know if there are any actual sketch tiers left. They all went. Yes, yeah, so you can get all covers and the sketchbook for 125. I think that's the biggest thing you can get at the moment. Um, so there's just two new covers and then the two variant of the of the original, of the one and two. I think that's how it is. I'll check it out. Okay, so this one you only get with one cover and the sketchbook. Yeah, Henry Bemis is right. All the sketch tiers are sold out. <clears throat> oh, for Broken 4. Oh. Getting quick. They were gone. I, I saw he was live. I think maybe an hour or two after, after it had gone live. And they were already all gone. He must have put up more, though, because I, I don't remember seeing two of these. So he must have put up another one at some point later. Um, I guess you got to pay attention to his newsletter and everything. So, dude, I definitely would. Owning a piece of original Kenneth Roker Fort, especially Groken, would be a dream come true, I think. Michael, just take your time. As awesome, Make it as awesome as Waking Dream. As a fan, I know you can't rush fantastic art and story. Your first book was really great, introducing me more to a French Euro style. Well, thank you so much, David L., uh, I've I've taken my time. I'm um, not rushing it. I can't rush. I don't know how to. Uh, I don't cut corners in that sense. But uh, yeah, it absolutely will be on par. I think better than the first book. But you know, that's just me. There were two sketch tiers: a five by seven and a six by eight. Then he had a four hundred seventy-five dollar tier featuring slightly smaller sketches. Yeah, they ain't cheap, but Julier is my favorite Frenchie. Says carbon dioxide. I like this guy. Where is he? Where did I put it? My wife, who is French, loves when I pronounce his name. Mathieu Lafre. <laughs> he yells at me. You're making a mockery of the French. Yes, yes, I am. Thank you, everyone, uh, for stopping in. I have no idea how many people are watching. Uh, 37, all right, not bad, not bad. So we've got 10 watching over on Rumble. Uh, thank you, everyone, for popping in. That's it for me today. I'll be back tomorrow. If you haven't backed it yet, grab the Lucent. You you might just tip me over 70,000, depending on what you back. 
We are about, I think, a month away from finishing the art in the book. I've got to do pre-press. I still got to do some like art fixes and stuff. It's got to get leaded, but that'll be happening very soon. And yeah, we are good to go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I gotta go to work. In two minutes. Bye. Individually, we are weak, like a single twig. But as a bundle, we form a mighty family.